Amen. Come on, bless the Lord for he is good. Amen. He is truly good. Amen. Thank God for another day to come out and worship him collectively. Amen. And then we thank God for all of our uh, scholars. Come on, give them a hand. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, clap for the children. Amen. Come on, y'all can do a little better than that. Amen. You may not have one over here, but y'all encourage the ones that are over here. Amen. And thank God for all of those who give leadership to our program on today, to our, to our MC, Brother Lezra. Amen. To all of our uh, clergy and to all of our brother deacons and first lady, all of our ministry leaders and uh, all of our guests that are worshiping with us uh, in the sanctuary or watching online, we thank God for you today. Amen. Amen. Thank God for all of those who have served this day in whatever capacity you've served. Truly thankful and grateful what you do for the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, continue to keep those families lifted in prayer. Amen. Um, as they go through, you heard Reverend Tilly read the list of all of the bereavements of uh, people who are uh, connected to members of this church who have gone home to be with the Lord. Amen. And uh, of course, two of our members, amen, amen, Sister Lily Jean Parrish, Lisa Wood, the mother of Lisa Woodard, and uh, then our own brother, uh, Larry Taylor, the husband of Sister Tony Taylor, amen. Uh, so keep them, keep them lifted uh, in prayer. All of those families, it's them right now. But it could be us before the benediction is over. Amen. So we just pray for, for one another. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. As we continue this series of trusting God when you don't understand. Amen. Last week we talked about trusting God when life hurts. Amen. And we want to stay in that same, same vein today. And we solicit your prayers. But the word of God reads in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse number 1. You'll find these words. Are you there? Amen. If you don't have your, your Bible or your smart device, uh, look up on the screen. Amen. It is necessary to boast. It is not helpful, but I will move on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who was caught up into the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether he was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. I know that this man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up into paradise. He heard inexpressible words which a man is not allowed to speak. I will boast about this person, but not about, but not about myself, except of my weakness. For if I want to boast, I will not be a fool because I will be telling the truth. But I will spare you that no one can credit me with something beyond what he sees in me or hears from me, especially because of the extraordinary revelations. Therefore, so that I would not exalt myself, a thorn in the flesh was given me, a messenger of Satan to torment me so I would not exalt myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may reside in me. So because of Christ, I am pleased in weakness, in insults, in catastrophes, 
in persecutions and in pressures. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Uh, God, now, Father, Lord, how we thank you. We praise you today. For God, you're so good. And Lord, you've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. And for that, we are thankful. God, for your gift of salvation, we say thank you. That we're now your children and we can call and cry, Abba, Father. And so, Lord, here we are one more time crying out, Father, we need thee. And God, we stretch our hands towards you. So God, now lift me up from where I am to where I need not be. God, I lean down on you. Have thine own way. And we shall forever give you praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Right before you take your seat, just look at your neighbor and tell him good morning. Amen. A neighbor, with the help of God, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, and our prayers, and because of Jesus Christ, our pastor is going to preach about the thorn and grace. Amen. You may be seated. The thorn and, and grace. Thank you so much, ushers, amen, and greeters for your faithful and continued service. We are not fond of pain or even slight discomfort for that matter. We rebel at the suggestion of it, we recoil at the sight of it and we reject the suggestion that it might be good for us. But Deacon Miles, the lessons of life are almost and always taught in the classroom of suffering. From Professor Payne, whether you're suffering through an elementary school quiz or dealing with the excruciating pain of disease or the heartbreak of, of grief. All of us at some point in our lives are going to deal with some uncomfortable situations. Everyone knows that bad things happen. And yes, bad things happen to good people. But it can be easy when something bad crushes your heart or the heart of someone you love to raise some questions. Why, why did God let this happen? What have I done wrong? Is he punishing me? Does he dislike me? Is God taking his favor away from me? And sometimes Morgan, we interrogate ourselves and investigate our painful situations through unbiblical glasses and come up with some ungodly conclusions. If God really loved me, if my life was truly pleasing to him, if everything was all right between us, only good things would happen to me because after all, God, I've been told, is a loving father and surely as my loving heavenly father, he wants me as his child to be healthy, happy, and problem free. So when a bad situation comes, we have these nagging questions about our relationship with him. And we began, they began to surface and actually they intensify our misery. And when pain has penetrated your domain, your existence, you, you have a tendency to become angry, resentful and confused as to how possibly this could have happened to somebody like me. Have you ever doubted God's love whenever pain or suffering has come your way? 
When that situation has lasted more than a night, when it has lasted more than a month, when it seems like you come out of that situation and just to find yourself going into another situation, have you questioned God's love for you? Have you wondered what it is, God, and you try to figure out what have I done to deserve all of this calamity that is coming my way? And, and we need to be reminded that our inaccurate, accurate thought process often contradicts the love, the goodness, and the word of God. Because we have these erroneous views when we're going through periods of suffering as though God has abandoned us and as though he has forgotten about us and he's no longer in control. And we feel like we are all out here by ourselves, but we've got to remember that what God has said in his word to help us during those periods when life becomes difficult, when we we don't understand what God is doing while he allowed certain things to happen in our lives. Why he allowed my relative to have the same sickness as this other person. This person gets healed but my relative goes on to be with the Lord. And so we don't understand God how is it that you allow such a good person to go through so many difficult things but yet this means nasty evil and wicked person seems to be smoothing along sailing smoothly along in life and when we get those feelings we're almost like the fellow in the psalmist that began to look at the position and the prosperity of the wicked and he says he almost slipped because he was thinking wrong, because he was looking wrong. And sometimes, beloved, that's where we are when we find ourselves in some bad, painful situations. But don't question God's love. Just remember what he said in his word. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life does he love me well yet while we were sinners Christ Jesus died for us. What great love had the Father commended toward us that yet while we were weak, without strength, while we were sinners, he died for us. Does he love me? Yes, I'm going through, but uh, the Bible says that no greater love have any man than this, that's the words of Jesus, uh, that he would lay down his life for his uh, friend and then one Friday he said, I'm not just going to say it, uh, but I'm going to show it. He laid his life down one Friday because of his love for each and every one of you. I wish I had somebody. And he took care of your greatest need on Calvary. Our greatest need was that we needed to have peace with God. We needed to be in relationship with God and the only way that was possible is that Jesus had to die one Friday lay down his life got up early Sunday morning and now we are in relationship with God that was our greatest need and if he took care of that what makes you think God won't give you what you need as you deal with the painful situations of life in this passage, Paul teaches us some valuable lessons on how to accept the thorn and appreciate the grace. So the first thing I want to lift from this text is the perplexity of pain. When you look at verses 1 through 6, God had granted the Apostle Paul a vision of the highest heaven. He was honored to go into the third heaven, the first heaven, that's the atmospheric heavens, which includes the air where we breathe, where as the space that immediately surrounds the earth. You can look up, go outside, look up, and you can see that. Then there's the second heaven, the celestial heaven. This refers to, to outer space or the stellar heaven. You can take an advanced aircraft or rocket ship and you can travel there. 
It includes the sun, the moon, the stars, and, and all of that. And then there's the third heavens. The third heavens, that's the heaven of heavens. That's where God abides. That's, that scripture speaks of that heavenly domain that's not visible from earth or neither can you travel there. The only way you can get there is you have to be invited. You can only get there by invitation and God has to call you to come to come there. And if you have placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then one day you'll get to go there because you've already accepted his invitation. I wish I had somebody here. And so here is Paul. Paul had heard words that could not be repeated. He'd seen things, Mark, that he, 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 he couldn't share with anybody. Paul had experienced what others would never experience in life instead of being able to boast about it. Paul had to suffer because of it. Here is Paul having this mountaintop experience. Paul has been honored by God. Paul didn't ask God if he could go there. God just takes him there and he wants to show him some things. But now because that God has honored him, Paul is now suffering. Paul would, you know, we would really would like to boast about something like that. I wish I had somebody here. If the Lord allowed us to go see heaven, boy, we sure want to come back and tell everybody about it. But the Lord says, uh-uh, no, Paul, no, you can't talk about this. These words cannot be uttered. You, you're not going to be able to boast about it. And then I don't want you to get beside yourself. So here is Paul. Paul says, you know what? I'm your servant. Think about it. I'm a church starter. I plant churches. I'm a missionary. I'm a preacher of the gospel. And now I'm suffering. I've been doing a good work for you. And God, now I have a thorn in my flesh. Have you ever felt like that? That's the perplexity of pain. Because God, I've been doing good. God, I've been doing the best I can for the kingdom of God. And it seems like every time I make some advancing steps for the kingdom, it seems like trouble always comes my way. I wish I had somebody here. Listen, listen, but beloved, let me help you understand that all of us, God had only one son with no sin. But he had none that didn't experience pain. All of us experienced pain, but only one didn't have any sin. All of us are going to go, go through something. We never get an excuse absence when we are living this human existence. We are never going to be excused from going through the classroom of suffering. Paul, this thorn has, and then catch this, this thorn. Here's the perplexity of it. Because this thorn had nothing to do with sin. Because often we, 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 we look at it like uh, Job's, uh, uh, Job's crazy friends uh, or we look at other people when they're suffering like Job's friends uh, and accusing them uh, uh, or even accusing ourselves uh, saying, listen, I must have done something wrong for God to allow this storm or this painful situation uh, to come into my life. But can I tell you, it's not always about sin when you suffer. Paul tells us about the nature he endured. Listen, Paul says, it was a thorn and it was sent to buffet me. A thorn, this word thorn, it's a sharp wooden stake that was used to stab a person or torture them. The word buffet means to hit with a fist. Or, or to mistreat. And if you read the passage closely, notice what he says. It was a messenger from Satan sent to torment him. Whatever it was Paul endured, it, 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 it was to him like being constantly punched and constantly stabbed 24-7. The pain was sharp. Moffat, it was a stabbing pain. How painful was it? He said it was a messenger of Satan. It was straight out of hell, bad, stabbing, beating pain. 
What was the nature of Paul's thorn? Well, many suggest it was some kind of eye disease, others malaria, some epilepsy, or some other, some other kind of physical affliction. Whatever it was, it made life difficult for Paul. Whatever it was, it made whatever he had to do more difficult. One thing we know for sure about Paul's thorn, it may have been carried out by Satan, but it was conceived by God. Satan ain't the father of all adversity. He's the father of lies. Sometimes, some things that come in our way, God has a way of using even evil. I wish I had somebody here to bring about good. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. Because the enemy could not do anything to Paul. He couldn't do anything to Job unless they had permission from God. And he said, a messenger of Satan was given to me as though it was a gift. God, what a strange gift that you're going to give me this messenger of Satan to buffet me. It's constant, it's day in and day out that Paul has to deal with this painful situation. Listen, and y'all have run into some people like that. You've read it to some of Satan's messengers. Oh, you wake up in the morning. Here you are doing nothing but good. You're trying to live right. You wake up in the morning. Here it is, Monday morning, church. You, you're still excited about the worship on Sunday. You get in your car on Monday morning. You've had your devotional time. You've had your coffee. You get on the freeway. You got your music on. Change me. And you're listening all the way because you really want to change. Lord, change me. And you pull up on the parking lot at work and you walk in and you still, the music is still, the tune is still going in your head and you walk in the office and there that messenger of Satan is. One of your co-workers, that, that same one that's been harassing you day in and day out, that mean, nasty classmate. I wish I had somebody here. And that messenger of Satan and you wonder, why do you keep bothering me? But there's a purpose. There's a purpose why God allows these things, Malik, to come into our, into our lives. The purpose of the plane is this, uh, is that sometimes we suffer simply because we are human. Our bodies change as we grow, as we grow older and, 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 and things begin to happen. We don't move like we used to move. We're not as fast. We got pains that we never had before. And, and then the same body that can bring us pleasure can also bring us, bring us pain. And sometimes we suffer because we are foolish. Because we are disobedient and because uh, we have been uh, uh, re in rebellion and that rebellion calls us to be afflicted and the Lord will chasten us in his love. But then because see, the Lord will forgive our sins, but in his government he must permit us to reap what we sow. And so suffering also is a tool God uses to build godly character. But in the case of Paul... Paul helps us to understand. Paul says, for this buffeting was so that I would not lift myself. I would not be exalted above measure. So, so this phrase means to lift oneself above one's place. Because of all the blessings Paul had been given. Paul was able to do a whole lot for God. Paul planted church after church. He wrote letter after letter. He led this person to Christ, that person to Christ. Paul was this gospel globe trotter for God. And God gave Paul this thorn in his flesh. Catch this. To regulate that flesh. Paul, I'm giving you this thorn to keep you grounded. It, it was sent to remind Paul that this thing was about God and not about Paul. Because sometimes when God uses us in a great way, we can become arrogant. prideful. If I was you, I'd say man so they won't think they talk, I'm talking about you. You become prideful thinking, I've done this. Boy, I made them shout today. I sung to them today. They shouted. I, 
Boy, I preached today. I slayed them in the spirit. They was knocked out. They was You get beside yourself. And sometimes we can get so beside ourselves that we ain't no good for God even to use. And so he has to allow this thorn to come in our flesh to regulate that flesh. It was sent to remind Paul that this thing is all about God. In other words, it was sent to keep Paul humble. Because we got that tendency to want to get some of the glory. But all the glory belongs to God. You see, suffering and trouble tends to keep us anchored. It, it tends to keep us grounded. We, we're reminded of just what we are and just what we can do without him. That is nothing. One of the purposes of the thorns is of life that they remind us that we are made of flesh and we need his power to get anything done. So he, lets, he reminds Paul, Paul, this is not about you. Paul, you're going to need my power to be able to press through this situation that has now come up in your life. There's nothing like a time of crisis to remind you how weak and how frail you really are. That's why when Gideon, that's why when Gideon had, had his army and they were going up against the Midianites, uh, the Lord said, Gideon, you have too many. I need you to reduce your forces. Lord, I'm already outnumbered. I need you to reduce the forces. And Gideon, I tell you what, you still have too many. Reduce them again. And the reason is, he says, Gideon, I need the forces to be reduced uh, lest Israel vaunt herself uh, against me. Lest y'all get puffed up in pride uh, and think y'all got the victory on your own. Uh, I need to put you in a situation uh, so all you can do is depend on me. And when you make it through what you're going through, you're going to be able to look back and say, had it not been for the Lord. That it was nobody but God that brought me through what I went through. Nobody but God that gave me the victory over this situation. That's why when that situation came in the Gospels with the multitude, the two fish and the five loaves, the Bible declares that Jesus knew what he was going to do. But he asked the disciples, he said, what, what, what do we have to eat? And they said, listen, all we could find was two fish, five loaves of bread. Uh, and what is that among so many? We've got over 15,000 people, 5,000 men, uh, not counting women and children. Uh, but all you got is two fish, five loaves of bread. Their back was up against the wall. It was a situation beyond their control. But the Bible says Jesus knew what he was going to do. Him, my beloved, he knows what he's going to do. And sometimes he allows you to get in a situation that all you can do is put everything you got in his hands and say Lord here it is I need you to do something with it but I can't handle what I'm going through there's nothing like a time of crisis to remind you how weak and frail you really are. But not only does it remind us that we need his power, but notice this thorn drove him to his knees. When he began to hurt, he said, I called on the Lord three times. And often when the path of life is easy, Phyllis, we forget how much we need the Lord. Let, 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 let a whole year go by with no trouble. Let a whole year go without anybody harassing you. or Let, let everything be just smooth, copacetic. I mean, for a year. You have a tendency to forget about God. We get slack in our devotional lives. We tend to become self-sufficient. But when trouble comes knocking, when we're pierced by the stabbing uh, troubles of life, as the hymnologist said, long as I live and trouble rise, I will haste quickly, immediately. I'm running to his throne. 
And so every now and then God allows things in our lives because for some of us, he knows if I didn't allow trouble to come, Lezra, you would never call on me. So every now and then, God has to allow difficulty. Because difficulty, Dr. Allen, will drive us to our knees. Difficulty will make you cry out like David, Lord, how long? How long? How long will you, will you forget me? Difficulty will make you cry out like David when I was in a horrible pit. He inclined, the reason he inclined, because I called unto him. When your heart is heavy, when your heart is broken, it'll make you want to cry out. That's, that's why I don't understand this craziness. When folk going through stuff, then they disappear. That's when your time you ought to get closer. Closer to the Lord, closer to the saints of God that can help you pray through this situation, that can encourage you through the situation. That ought to be a time when you are getting closer to God and the people of God when you are going through a difficult time. It's true, difficulty will drive you to your knees. It'll increase your prayer life. So when everything is cool, you pray them hit and miss prayers. God, thank you this morning for last night's laying down. Thank you, God, that uh, uh, my bed wasn't my cooling board and all that, my winding sheet. God, thank you that you woke me up. I got the activity on my limb. God, bless me, bless my family. Amen. And you get in your car and you're gone. Get back home at night. God, thank you for a good day's work. God, amen. Uh, watch over my family. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. But when your heart is hurting, when your back is up against the wall, when the pressure of life is on, you got a tendency to labor and you stay there. And sometimes you can't even say nothing, but you can't stop talking. You can't, you, you, you can't even find the words to say, but your heart is heavy. And thank God for the Holy Spirit who makes intercession for us that when our words can't even come out right, that he can take our moaning and our groaning and present it before the throne of God. God, I wish I had somebody here. You stay there a little longer when you're really, when you're really going through something. You got more to say to him. Because you're trying to get God to get you out of this thing and, and get you through this thing. And you understand you're going to need his help. You're going to need his power. Listen, listen, there are times of plenty and prosperity will hinder a lot of our prayer lives. So he says, let me let you walk through some barren places so I can hear from you. But notice something about Paul's prayer. He prayed three times. God heard him the first time. He prayed the same prayer. He prayed three times. I said he was very, very specific in what he wanted the Lord to do. I want you to remove this thorn. He prayed three times. Three times. Why did he pray three times? It could be he didn't like God's answer the first time. It just could be God had already said no. But he didn't like what God had to say. And sometimes we don't like God's answer. And it could be that God was just being silent and God didn't answer. But whatever the case, Paul's situation did not change. Because sometimes prayer doesn't change things. It changes you. It didn't change what Paul was going through. The thorn didn't go away, but what happened, Paul changed, and Paul comes back, as we're going to see in a few verses, and Paul says, I discovered when I'm weak, I am strong. His situation didn't change, but Paul changed in the midst of it. And sometimes God is not going to change our situation. There are people he's not going to remove from your job. He's not going to remove from your ministry. Yes, they're not just at work. They're at church too. He's not going to remove from your ministry. Some stuff you just going to have to live with.
and he'll change you in the midst of it. But notice the power out of the pain. Verses 9 through 10. In the midst of the suffering, it was extremely difficult to find the purpose of our pain and to celebrate that purpose unless, of course, faith is involved. Because in the midst of pain, there, there's an opportunity for my faith, Joseph, to mature. That there, there's an opportunity in the midst of what I'm going through that can accelerate my Christian growth like nothing else can because I'm trusting God, I'm believing God, I'm talking to God more, I'm leaning on him, I'm depending on him, I'm walking by his word. It takes a tremendous step of faith to pray to God who allows the suffering and say, God, I don't know your purpose in my pain, but God, I'm going to trust you through the process. God, I don't know the purpose, but I know you got a purpose. I don't know what you're doing, but God, I'm going to trust that you know what's best, and I'm going to trust you as you take me through this process. Paul says that when the infirmities of life have pressed beneath, have pressed their weight upon you, he says, I'm stronger than ever when I find myself under this heavy load. Why? Because the power of God is able to work in your life because you have been subdued by your weaknesses and now this pressure has you weighted down and so now God is able to move in and he's able to work with great power in your life. God is able to move in at my weakest point and make me strong. I wish I had somebody here because I find myself being weak in my flesh but I'm strong in my spirit and when we are broken by the poundings of life we are brought to the place where God can move in on us and through us in extraordinary ways do you want the power of God to rest in your life well beloved you're going to have to pay the price and sometimes that means you've got to go through some painful stuff for God to show up in your life and show himself mighty because what happens you become a, a prime witness for God because people know somebody in your family who you love just passed away but yet they see how you are still holding holding it together and you're walking by faith and not by sight and you're still trusting God and believing God though life is difficult right now ain't nothing changed about your faith you're still trusting him you're still believing him trouble in your way storm clouds are hanging low but you are still the same you trusting God praising God leading worship praying leading people in devotion still leading ministries still coming to worship still telling people God is good he's able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all you can think ask or imagine Paul began to rejoice in what he was going through listen to the words he used he says more gladly most gladly I take pleasure Paul said he stopped seeing his situation from an earthly perspective and he starts seeing it from God's perspective <laughs> beloved when we are going through situations it's nothing but a light affliction that cannot compare to the weight of glory that lies ahead and can I tell you God said to Paul he said Paul my my grace is sufficient. When is the last time you prayed and thanked God for allowing you to go into a situation? When is the last time you said, God, thank you for giving me an opportunity for my faith to increase in you? God, thank you for this opportunity for me to mature in my walk with you. God, thank you for placing me in a position where I've got to depend on you and trust you. He says, Paul, I'm not going to remove your thorn, but I'm going to give you exactly what you need. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Y'all missed it. My grace is sufficient. Paul says, I got a thorn. He says, Paul, I got grace.
for your thorn. But what God was really saying to Paul, he says, Paul, you got grace. But he already had grace. What he was saying is what I've already given you is sufficient to keep you what you're going through. I already gave you grace. And what I gave you is sufficient to give you strength. It's sufficient to keep you. It's sufficient to hold you. Listen, when you're going through something, people have a tendency to look at you and be inspired how you handle what you're going through. If it's in the world of sports, if you look at John Elway limping back to the huddle before taking his team to the Super Bowl title, in the movies, if you look at Rocky getting off the mat after he's been knocked down multiple times, you remember when he was fighting Dragon, that old Russian, and the Russian was whooping Rocky, but Rocky kept getting up, and the crowd was booing him when he first came in, but he inspired them because he kept on taking a beating, and he kept getting up, and they inspired, they were inspired by Rocky's fortitude, they were inspired by Rocky's determination, and he kept getting up, and the crowd changed, they stopped booing him, and they said, Rocky, 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 because he had inspired them. It might be a wounded soldier who comes home from battle, but is still proud to wear the uniform, even though he may have lost a lot. And like the Apostle Paul, he had been shipwrecked, stoned, beaten, left for dead, chased by bandits, and hated by religious leaders. But this same Paul kept getting back up, and he stands up and declares, if God be for us, who can be against us? And he inspires us to keep on going. He inspires us to press through our pain. And there's another man who showed us how to deal with pain and trust in the Father's plan. He prayed three times like Paul. Let this cup pass from me. But it did not pass. He knew the pain of rejection, the pain of betrayal, the pain of being laughed at, mocked and ridiculed. He went on to the cross and that was shown up pain. He died one body, but thanks be to God, he got up early Sunday morning. He had pain on Friday. But he got power on Sunday. He had pain on Friday. But he got up with all power. He went down with pain on Friday. But got up Sunday with all power. I'm talking to somebody. Catch your neighbor by your hand. And tell them, neighbor, you might have pain right now. But God's going to give you power for your pain. God going to give you his power so you can walk through the storm and walk through your valley. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, whatever it is, sickness, pain, grief, death, divorce, whatever it is, he'll give you power in the midst of your pain. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Whatever it is. And can I tell you what else? Whoever it is, whoever it is that's causing your pain, you ought to call them right now. Go and send them a text message and tell them, keep on, keep harassing me. Keep talking about me. Keep on uh, thinking I'm weak uh, because God's uh, gonna give me power. The more you talk about me, 
the more I'm going to feel my knees. Yes! Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Is there anybody here? You tried him and you said, Lord, here I am. I can't handle this situation. I need your power. Did he show up? Did he show up? Is there anybody here that can testify? I've been through the storm. I've been through the rain. But here I am. Yeah! Ah, yeah! I made it! Look at your, look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. You ought to tell somebody, stop praying. Lord, get me out. Lord, work on me while I'm in. Strengthen me. Build me. God, get glory out of what I'm going through. I want you to get glory. This is not about me. I'm just an instrument. I'm just a vessel. We sang that song, Lord. I'm completely yours. Try me now and see. If I'm completely his, Lord, if you've got to take me through a fiery furnace, I'm yours. Lord, if you've got to take me through a lion's den, I'm yours. Lord, if you've got to take me through my own Gethsemane, I'm yours. Try me now and see. Peter wanted me to remind you as I was talking to him last night beloved think it not strange when you go through these fiery trials because your faith has to be tested but here's the good news when you come for as pure gold Isaiah said, can I tell them some, Rem, because they may not hear Peter, but maybe they'll hear me. Isaiah said, tell them. If they just wait on the Lord, in the midst of what they're going through, if they wait on him, he'll renew their strength. And they'll mount up with eagles, wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. David got on the line and David said, man, don't leave me out of this. He said, just remind them that as they're going through, don't forget to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Paul said, I started this conversation. Peter, you, Isaiah, and David got in. I started it, so let me finish it. Paul said, tell them, Reverend, when they start questioning God's love, when they're going through, just remind them that neither night, neither height, nor death nor an angel things that have been things that are things that shall come that nothing 
shall separate them from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. about his testimony never would have made it without you that's 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 the that's the that's the benefit of of the buffeting because you become stronger wiser better as a result of going through what you've been through, your prayer life is better. Your, your, your witnessing is better. Your worship is better. Your praise is different. I've got to trust him when I don't understand I've got to trust him Phil when life hurts I've got to accept the thorn that he allowed to come into my life and then I've got to appreciate his grace knowing that he will give me power in my pain and when I am weak, then I am strong. Because it's not me, but it's Christ that liveth in me. Come on, give God praise for giving praise. We want to extend an invitation. Invitation for salvation secondly invitation church membership thirdly invite you to come for prayer if that's you in one of those categories just ask that you would stand as the music ministry renders this selection just ask that you would stand right where you are and somebody will come to you Never would have made it. Won't you come? Never could have made it without you. Yes, Lord Jesus. I would have lost it all. But now I see how you were there for me. And I'll say, I never. I would have lost it all, but now I see how you were there for me, and I can say I'm stronger, and I'm wiser, I'm better, so much better, when I look back over all you brought me through.
plants and other waters, but God with his awesome self gives the increase. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Bless his name. We turn it back over now into the hands of our MC, Brother Lezra Do. Wasn't that just amazing? A powerful message. To know that you always have someone to count on. He's there for you, your way maker, our provider, to give us our strength. He's our peace. And now moving on to the program with our presentations of our James Kennard Scholarship and our Sarah M. Mack Scholarship and our Deacon Robert Gaines Scholarship. Thank you, Great Commission, one more time. Another year have come. Uh, we want to thank you, Pastor Brown, for another year for scholarship awards. This year, our scholarship awards uh, come with the plat. Uh, the plat will be presented later on, uh, maybe tomorrow. Have, have to get, get it made. Uh, our year of uh, scholarship awards in memory of Jasmine J.J. Cunard. Scholarship goes to uh, uh, Korea, uh, Kara uh, Grams. Amount of three hundred dollars. Good morning, Great Commission. Thank you, Pastor, for that message. This year, for 2019, the Sarah M. Max Scholarship recipient is one of my Sunday school students. All the kids were actually my Sunday school students. So it's a blessing to see them move on. However, this year's recipient is Kiara Graham. <laughs> So for my engineering folks, who happens to be Evan and Kendrick, who graduated on this year, you got another person in your pack, and I want you all to go to her side and support her. She's majoring in engineering at the University of Houston. Great Commission. First of all, I'd like to uh, just give an honor to God. I'd also like to thank Pastor Brown for allowing us to do this through the church to, uh, to have the Robert L. Gaines Scholarship uh, here at the Great Commission Baptist Church. So again, I just, for those who've been around here a while, you remember Deacon Gaines. Uh, he, he was a big part of what we did at, at, at this church. And uh, 
we, we started this scholarship to remember his, his legacy and honor him for what he did here at the Great Commission Baptist Church. So that the president of our organization is Sister Alfred Gaines. She could not be here today, so uh, I am here presenting the award today. And so uh, uh, again, you know, Deacon Gaines faithfully served God. He faithfully served his family. Uh, he faithfully served this church, and I'll tell you, he loved his pastor. He had plenty of conversations with me about he loved his pastor and he loved this church. So uh, one other thing, and, and over time, it's just kind of, I've heard somebody say recently, say, man, I sure wish Deacon, you know, he missed Deacon Gaines. So I was talking about the parking lot and said, you know, Deacon Gaines would have taken care of that. So again, uh, we thank God for all of those who, who, who've helped support this. And so what we have this year is a, a single scholarship, $4,000 scholarship, and a scholarship this year goes to Kiara Grant. Good evening, Great Commission. I stand before you to, um, to introduce to you our scholarship recipients. We had five scholarship recipients for the GCBC scholarship. But before I do that, let me introduce the committee, and I, I would ask them to come forward and stand with me. We have Dr. Ernest Thomas. Dr. June Davis. Dr. LaTanya Mayfield, Sister Lorraine Collier, and Sister Andrea Brunfield. If the committee could stand to my left, please. The Great Commission Baptist Church Scholarship, in order to apply for the scholarship, these students must be actively involved in ministry more than one year, and they must be, uh, they have a series of things that they have to accomplish in order to reach this point. One of the things they have to do is write an essay, and they also have to interview with the panel. So if you're interested, if your children are interested in becoming a, a recipient of the GCBC scholarship, see one of us and we can tell you what they need to do. They cannot just wait to become a senior to get involved in ministry, okay? The other thing is that we, you know, the Great Commission Baptist Scholarship, we're able to do this through tithes and offering. Uh, and I want to say I applaud you, Great Commission, because so many children have benefited from these scholarships. And I thank you so much for your obedience and giving back to, to these children and to Great Commission. So with further ado, let me just introduce to you our recipients. We have Victoria Mayfield, and she's going to receive a $3,000 scholarship. Next, we have Jonathan Morgan, and he's going to receive a $4,000 scholarship. Next, we have Vanetta Mayfield, Venice Mayfield. I think we mispronounced it. Venice Mayfield, and she's going to receive a $4,000 scholarship. Woo! 
Next, we have Dorian Gardner, and he's going to receive a $5,000 scholarship. And last, we've heard this name many, many times throughout this day. We have Kiara Graham, and she's going to receive a $6,000 scholarship. Can we get you guys to move on the stage real quick? Move on the stage. Your program. We're going to, so we move expeditiously. If Sister Kim Guy could come, amen. And Sister Lyons is already here, and they're going to have their remarks. Amen. Come on, thank God for all of our scholarship recipients. Amen. And Sister Lyons said it so well, we are able to do this because people faithfully tithe. Amen. 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 We've done that. Uh, year after year we've been able to sow a seed and be a blessing to so many young people it's because 